This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome back. So now we are in basic setting, right? So in basic setting, what we have seen guys, we have seen uh, this posting period variant, fiscal year variant and field status variant. Uh, these are the three things guys. Okay, if you talk about the configuration part, it's just a matter of three minutes, guys. We can create posting period variant, assign it to the company code. Set up fiscal year variant, assign it to the company code. Set up field status variant and assign it to the company code. Okay. Now, but of course, logic, what is the exact use? What is the exact control that you guys need to know? Right. That is why it takes time. Okay. And once again, as I said, it is going to be practically also i'll be showing guys don't worry now so here the next setting is number range what is this number range right so number range i'll tell you guys when you talk about any transactions whichever transactions are getting posted say for example i told a most simplest like rent related transactions so rent account is going to be debited and let's suppose bank account is going to be credited right so if this is the transactions any amount let's suppose 2000 and 2000 so what will happen when we are going to post this transactions right so what will happen guys when you post the transactions this is one transactions okay likewise you will be having another transactions say for example audit fee account is going to be debited and bank account is going to be credited okay salary account debit bank account credit different different transactions are there right now so what will happen guys when you post a transaction here in sap what will happen a transaction number is going to be generated when the transactions are going to be recorded in the books of account what will happen guys every transaction certain sequence number or certain numbers are going to be specified over there likewise here what is happening in sap if any transaction got posted, system is going to generate a transaction number. Okay, system is going to generate a transaction number. So here in SAP language, when any transaction is going to be posted, guys, the transaction is called document. Okay, one transaction got posted in SAP language, it is called a document got posted. Every transaction equals to one document okay so when i say transaction got posted so transaction is nothing but document so document got posted when you post a transaction transaction number is getting generated right so what is happening guys transaction is document so transaction number is document number okay so now here what is happening say for example if you talk about the uh, you know transactions now here we are having like transactions like JV posting. We will be having like list of our uh, customer invoice posting. Right. And we are having vendor invoice posting. So different, different kind of transaction guys. Right. Cash related transactions are there. Isn't it? payment related transactions are there so now different different kind of transactions are getting posted okay so here what is happening guys okay now here transactions are so whenever these transactions are getting po posted what will happen a transaction number is going to be generated transaction is called document so document number will be generated now so here i'll say document whenever any documents are going to be posted document number will be generated now further if you want to segregate that okay when the customer invoice whenever like customer invoice is getting posted so at that point of time a document number whichever is getting generated it must be having a different series okay vendor invoice a different series jv a different series so by looking at the document number also people will be able to like let's suppose here when i say it's like so whenever say for example when jv is getting posted that 
the document number will be generated from this from this range 1000 sir your voice is breaking sir voice is breaking is it breaking for everybody or it is fine guys is it breaking for everybody no sir it's fine right now no yes, sir fine yes. it's fine okay good so guys for one single person if it is breaking then you have to just exit and you have to rejoin okay now so here jv posting jv posting means let's suppose here 1000 to 1999 okay say for example when you post a general voucher normal transactions general voucher means gl to gl entry this is a gl account this is also a gl account so gl to gl entry means let's suppose when you post a gl how jv is going to be posted we are having certain transaction code that also you guys will come to know one by one i'm going to explain all those things so what is happening number range we have created 1000 to 1999 so what will happen sap is going to generate sap is going to generate a number from this range when the customer invoice is going to be posted let's suppose or when let's suppose your customer invoice means 2000 to 2999 okay when the vendor invoice is or is like i'll just do one thing guys okay now Here, yeah. and we can see here. Yes, so this is when the vendor invoice is going to be posted. Let's suppose this. So, the number which is getting generated, document number that will be getting generated from this range. From this range, and for customer invoices. So different different number range can be defined. Okay. Now there might be a question in your mind that when the numbers are getting generated, right? What will happen if this number is going to be consumed? The entire number is going to be consumed. Then what to do? Are we going to define a new number range? I'll tell you guys no. it is impossible to consume the document number the reason behind is in real time here i have given four digit length right but in real time what is happening 10 digit length will be there isn't it in real time 10 digit length will be there in the sense like uh, whatever the range is there like let's suppose here one after let's up one followed by 90 okay so 10 digit and here again one followed by 9 Nine times nine, like that, our ranges will be there. So that is why, that is a huge range, isn't it? It is almost you can say it is, uh, you can say it is a kind of unlimited. We can say right, it's it's a huge. It is impossible to consume that much. Daily basis, how many documents are going to be posted? Maybe thousand, two thousand, four thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. If it is a very big organization, say for example, having multiple branches and multiple things. still so different different kind of transactions are getting posted right still it is impossible to consume the number and whatever the numbers are there guys every year we have to define the number range okay every year we have to define the number range okay i will not go in that logic right now that also you guys it is very simple guys you guys will be able to understand on very right now what is the use of number range so we have to define a number range because from that number range only a document number when you post a transactions transaction numbers are getting generated from the range which you have defined okay from this range which is which you have defined now there is a question guys now let's suppose when you post a transaction so let's suppose when you post a transactions jb posting vendor invoice customer invoice right now so what is happening now the question is when you post a jb so why the number is going to be generated from 1000 to from this range only how sap will come to know that at the time of jb posting or at the time of vendor invoice posting the number must be generated from this range only how sap will come to know right or at the time of customer invoice posting how sap will Come to know that the number must be generated from this range only, right? So I'll tell you guys now. 
generally what happened so you have to define a number ranges against a number range code let's suppose here number range code is 0 1 against this 0 1 what is happening against this 0 1 I'm going to define a code here number range code number range code is 0 1 against this 0 1 what is happening we have given this range likewise 0 2 so again 0 2 let's suppose I have given this range okay and then against this one we are having 0 3 let's suppose a code is going to be given against this code we are going to define this range now so 0 1 0 2 0 3 okay how it's okay but again the question is the question is question means what the question is still remain how SAP will come to know that during vendor invoice the number must be generated from this range only. customer invoice the number must be generated this way only so I'll tell you guys one thing first of all when you post a transaction how you will come to know which one is JV which one is customer invoice which one is vendor invoice right even in vendor related transactions we are having vendor invoice we are having vendor payment we are having like uh, you know credit memo vendor credit memo right in SAP guys here what happened if you talk about in general accounting we are having two terms debit memo and credit memo right here in SAP now now whatever you have studied in your 12th standard and those things are like you put it side in a uh, you know keep it inside line and all here in SAP what is happening vendor return means vendor credit memo and if we receive any return from customer that is going to be posted in the form of customer credit memo okay now again when the time comes when i'm going to post those trans those transactions and all we'll see that practically okay right now so different different kind of transactions are there right how you will come to know that okay this is jv this is vendor invoice this is, this is vendor invoice this is customer invoice how you'll come to know so guys whenever the transactions are getting posted transactions are getting posted against document type okay jv posting when you post the jv document type will be there right whenever documents are going to be posted transaction is nothing but document so whenever documents are getting posted it is getting posted against document type as a document type is going to be used at the time of jv post vendor invoice posting ar document type is going to be used customer invoice posting ar document type is going to be used okay so different different document types are going to be used again the question is how to remember this document type so i'll tell you guys no need to remember the document type by default it is going to appear when you post the transactions by default it is going to appear okay now so again the question is that when you post like vendor invoice right when you post vendor invoice the transaction number so called document number must be generated so why from this range only 2000 to 2999 why not from 3000 to 3999 or why not from 1000 to 1999 right that is the question so here i told you guys here okay some noise also you guys may what to say this one experience so kindly ignore it now here so we are having like SA document type kr document type dr document type when see when you set up this number ranges right so this number ranges are going to be assigned against the document type against kr document type i'm going to assign 0 2 against dr document type i'm going to assign 0 3 right and against SA document type I'm going to assign 0 1 so when you post JV right JV is going to be posted against SA document type SAP is going to check against SA document type what is the number range code we have given that is 0 1 and against 0 1 what is the range we have given 1000 to 1 triple nine so from this range system is going to generate a number try to understand this logic guys here I'll show you let me log in first of all i'll log in and we'll show you how to create a number range 
and then once again so i'll tell you guys initially better to set up everybody a single number range and code also better to give the same code i'll tell you the logic behind that there will be a benefit or else what will happen i think what is happening guys give me a second So just you need to understand the logic okay this is not at all finance and account guys simple things i'm explaining here now so here how to create a number range always use fb n1 transaction code and press enter fb n1 give your company code what is the company code guys i think pm30 right and click on enter button okay so here give a number range 0 1 and everybody give the same range guys okay don't give a different code here the reason you can number in you can give anything but give code zero one itself i'll tell you there is a logic behind that because you guys are going to get the error if you are going to give a different number in code later on once you become master you can give any code there is no any problem initially i'm talking sorry. zero one what is the year guys it is 2022 only right now okay and 1000 to let's suppose one triple nine i'm giving a small number range why because it will be quite simple and easy to remember the document number right if this is going to be quite easy for your further analysis if you right now itself if you guys are giving a very complex codes complex number ranges and all it will be very difficult to remember what was the previous transactions 10 digit length means it is very difficult to remember right four digit means 1010 1020 1030 1040 or 2132 like that okay just save it the number range code is just press enter here number range code we have given 0 1 and from number 1000 to number 199 now look at here i told you the length of the number range is 10 digits so here what is happening 1000 i have given so automatically system has include prefix 60 before 1000 and here also six zero before one triple nine it's okay it has nothing to do uh there is no any impact no. so what happened this number range code zero one okay and when you post a jv general vouchers so what will happen as i said like transactions are getting posted always against a document type okay always it is going to be posted against a document type so in document type what is happening guys this number range code 01 you have to assign okay now so that i'll let you know so here what we have done guys now we how to define this number range that we have defined the number range here 1000 to 1999 okay likewise multiple number range you have to define guys right now define only one number range of course in upcoming session we are going to define other number ranges also but not now okay right now one number range you have to set up now then from if you talk about the document type you might be having confusion but don't worry i'm coming on that topic also number range and document type i'll explain here this session so what we have done look at here define number range what is the use of number range while posting a transactions transaction is nothing but document system generate a transaction or so called document number based on the number range we define in SAP based on the number range which you have given here okay and again i'll repeat right what will happen if i consume this number range this one also is not going to be consumed guys while your practice and in real time of course 10 digit length means it is impossible to consume right because you have multiple transactions to post isn't it so this one is also what will happen if we are going to consume this number range 
right if you feel that you are you are able to post 1000 transactions then what will happen you can increase the number in here isn't it initially itself but in real time it is not required to be changed at year end once the like 2022 is over then what will happen with the same range we can define a different year, year will be different but number range will be same okay again some confusion will be there in that but don't worry i'll tell you guys because there will be a caution now in 2022 let's suppose there is a document number 1000 got generated and in 2023 again the same code is going to be generated so it's okay it's okay there is no any problem but later on you guys will be able to understand the logic behind that some of you of course are able to understand this whatever i'm explaining and of course some of you are not able to you know visualize the things which i'm explaining right now so that's what i say slowly slowly well we have to move further so that you guys will be having perfect understanding so number eight we have defined now now here document type this document type is also having association with the number name. look at here look at here guys document type determine the types of transactions right if you talk about customer invoice then customer credit memo customer payment right likewise vendor invoice vendor credit memo vendor payment we are having jv general voucher posting right so different different kind of transactions are there guys it is going to be posted against different different document type so if you have a look on document type wise also you will come to know let's suppose if you talk about like customer credit memo say for example customer invoice and we are having customer credit memo and customer payment for customer itself look at here we are having three kind of projects okay there is a customer abc limited what is happening guys you'll be having like you have posted an invoice worth of 5000 out of which customer has returned a goods worth of 2000 so that is going to be posted in the form of credit memo and then finally so this is plus guys this is debit and this is credit so finally how much in the sense this is plus and this is minus so plus 5000 and minus 2000 so how much 3000 is the remaining balance that much payment we are going to receive from customer and that also will be posted here into sap now so these are the three kind of transactions okay if you see the report against like let's suppose a customer single customer these all three transactions are there how you will come to know which one is invoice which one is credit memo which one is payment so of course these transactions are getting posted against different different document type now here we are having dr document type that is for customer invoice customer credit memo dg document type and customer payment dz document type okay you guys are going to be very much familiar with these all document type guys this is it is, it is going to be used on very frequently frequent basis so that is why you guys are going to be very much familiar with these all document types and all okay now no need to remember these document types and all multiple time we are going to use so you guys are going to be this document type will be there at tip of your tongue okay so first of all what is the use of document type guys look at here document type determine the types of transactions right dr document type means it is customer invoice dg document type customer credit memo dz customer payment likewise kr document type vendor invoice kg document type vendor credit memo and K kz document type vendor payment right as a document type for jv posting multiple document type will come into picture later okay now do you need to remember the question is do we need to remember this document type no need to remember the document types it's going to be you guys are going to be like uh, very very much familiar with these all things okay because multiple transactions you have to post in upcoming session and several time we are going to post the transactions so it will be quite simple to remember so now so first of all i explained what is the like what is the use of document type guys so document type determine the types of transactions in the sense with the help of document type you will come to know 
what is the what kind of transaction it is this 5000 which kind of transactions it is posted against KR layer document type it means it is customer invoice 2000 it is posted against dg document type it means it is customer credit number 3000 it is posted against dz document type it means it is customer payment so now the next one is it controls the document number ranges right it controls the document number ranges now the question is here we have defined the number range right and i am saying that document type control the number range of course document type itself is going to control the number range guys the reason behind is a range i have defined 1000 to 199 and it is created against a number range code 01 so whatever this number range codes are there guys this is going to be assigned against document type so when you post a transaction sap is going to check against which document type this transaction is getting posted right when you post a transaction sap is going to check against which document type it is getting posted so sap found sa document type let's say against sa document type what is the number range code we have assigned that is 01 right against sa document type what is the number range code we have assigned that is 01 right so and against 01 which range we have given 1000 to 1 triple line so from this range only what is happening guys a number is going to be generated okay now i'll show you here so what we have done we have defined a number range here like 1000 to 1 triple line and the code is 01 what do you have to do just do one thing go to ob a7 and i think it is gone so i'll have to log in once again let me double click once again i'll have to guys you guys might be hearing certain noise also if any noise is there kindly ignore it guys because my location is changed and for a few days the location will be different only okay now, so we have defined a number range number range let's suppose 01 is the number range code and again 01 if you go to fb and one right you have give your company code like pm30 okay so if you have to create you can click on interval change interval if you want to just display you can click on display only any anything so here 01 now you just go to oba7 transaction code and multiple document types are there multiple document type means these all are not standard document type of course it is created by multiple people right but still sap has delivered multiple standard document type which is going to be used for transaction costing and if required we can set up a new document type also when we have to set up a new document type in which cases again that also you guys will come to know in upcoming session because we are in a very beginning right nothing is complete not, nothing is explained right now we are in basic setting only right so multiple uh, what is say sessions will be there where you will be having requirement to set up let's suppose a new document type and all in which cases and all that is going to be explained in upcoming session if you have to define a new number range you need to click new document type you can click on new entry no need to go on that you just do one thing click on position and search sa document type because first of all what is happening we have to post a jv only in the sense once the entire configuration is completed so double click on sa document type and look at here number in zero one code is already assigned okay if any different code is there then you have to assign zero one right now just save it so what happened when any transaction is going to be posted let's suppose jv posting means fb50 transaction code we are going to use look at here it is getting posted against sa document type right here sa document type for some of you when i when you are going to use fb50 this document type field will not appear right it means i can say uh, i mean to say it is disappeared let's suppose 
So what is the reason, guys? Look at here. You'll be having option called editing option. And here, in a, look at your document type option. So here, your option will be different. I'll tell you what option. Your option will be different. Your option will be like this. Here, if you see the document type option, document type hidden option will be selected in your case. What do you have to do? You can select anyone. Display with short name, better to select this one itself. Okay, you can see the document number, document type, you cannot change the document type. Later on, you can change also. If you are going to select different one like entry with, sorry, here document type ready for intuitive. If you give them, you'll be able to enter the document type. You just select display with short name only. Okay, and then you save it. So in that case, what is happening? If you come back here, document type is in display mode. Okay, if somebody says like, no, I want to make it editable in the sense it should, it must be editable. In that case, what is happening? Display with short name, right? Entry with short name. You select, save it. In that case, it is going to be turned as a, this will turn as editable. Okay, anything. So this is how the document type is going to appear. When you post a transaction, let's suppose I say the rent account is going to be debited. Here it is going to be debited and bank account is going to be credit. Here rent is real and bank deal is going to be given. Okay. And the amount is going to be specified, debit amount and credit amount. So when you post a transaction, SCP is going to check. This transaction is getting posted against which document type? So SAP found the document type is SA. Then SAP is going to check in background OBA7 setting. Right. Against SA document type, against SA document type, what is the number range code we have given? That is 01. Then SAP is going to check again in background. Against this 01 code, you here also you can go directly FBN1 or else you can click here and from here also you can go to FBN1. Right now it is OBA7. If you click here, we are having transaction. Look at here this transaction OBA7. Now, which transaction code OBA7? And if you click on number in informations, look at here, transaction code got changed. That is the shortcut button from that document type. Also directly we can come to this, this, this. What is a number range? This one is screen. So what is happening? When you post a transaction, SAP is going to check against which document type this transaction is getting posted. Document type is SA. Against SA document type, what is the number range? That is 01. Then click on number in your information. So against 01 for your company code, I mean to say TM30, what is the number range we have given? So that is against 01, 1000 to 150. So from this range, what will happen, guys? From this range itself, SAP is going to generate a document number. Okay. So from this range, first of all, what is happening? Whatever the whatever the smallest number is there, that is going to be generated. Okay. And when the smallest number, now again, the question is, let's suppose we have posted one document. So our document number. 1000 got generated right now again if you post the next document then what is happening guys 1000 one will be generated next next document 1000 two will be generated so how sap is going to maintain this sequence how sap is able to remember that since last transaction was 1001 that is why this time the next transaction is 1002 right so a very simple logic is there for that here Whenever you post a transaction, right now, let's suppose we are having an option called NR status, number in status. So when you post a transaction, right, automatically here, let's suppose first document number, of course, 1000 itself is going to be generated, guys. So when you post a transaction, this document number 1000 is going to be generated and it will be posted and then this, this, 1000 document number is going to be generated and this 1000 will be updated here where under 
NR status. So what is the use of NR status guys? It is called number range status. When a transaction got posted, the latest transaction number, latest document number will be updated here under NR status field. Okay. So what will happen guys? This is how SAP will be able to remember that okay previous transaction which is now next time if you post a transaction then what is happening sap is going to check which document type okay against which document type this transaction is getting posted it is getting posted against let's suppose it is getting posted against sa document type so sa document type means against sa document type what is the number range code we have assigned that is 01 and against 01 what number range we have given 1000 to 1999 okay then sap is going to check nr status number in status and here 1000 is updated it means the previous transaction which got posted is the transaction number or so-called document number is 1000 so what is the next document number guys 1000 plus one so next document number will be 1001 right and 1001 so now what is happening automatically 1001 is going to be updated here right so this is how this is how what is happening guys transactions are getting posted sequence wise now you'll be having one option here this is called exd external look at here external assignment don't apply a check mark here if you apply a check mark here then what is happening at the time of transaction posting now you have to give the number manually okay manually user has to give the number so in that case it's a bit difficult to remember the sequence isn't it here if you give like external if you apply a check mark here then externally in the sense we are giving an instructions to sap that you kindly don't generate the document number automatically user is going to provide the document number manually so user will also provide the document number manually from this range only okay. right the range you have given 1000 to 1999 it doesn't mean that if you apply a check mark here so user is going to give a document number 2000 no user also have to give the document number here from this range only but again it is a bit difficult to remember what was the previous document number so that is why it is not going to be used of course in certain cases it it can be used again in upcoming session you guys will come to know now so here externally means no need to apply the check mark because manually what is the use uh, need of giving like manual document number when the sap is going to generate the document number sequence wise isn't it but yes this option is given by sap so here if you apply a check mark it means system is not going to generate the document number automatically the document number is going to be like at the time of transaction posting user has to decide which document number is going to be generated so they will give the document number manually okay now and if you don't apply a check mark then automatically the document number is going to be generated by system sequence wise right so don't apply a check mark here now so document type determined the types of transactions whether it is invoice credit memo or payment it controls the document number range i told you number range we have defined here but document type is going to control the number range how because how the number ranges are getting triggered guys of course it is getting triggered with the help of document type only isn't it the first point of contact is document type if number is getting generated First of all, system is checking which document type, right? Against that document type, what is the number range code we have given? And against that number range code, what range we have given? Then SAP is going to check number and status. What is the number got updated? So whatever number is there in that plus one, right? It is going to be. If number and status zero is there, in that case, system is going to check the smallest number and that is going to be generated, okay? now there is another thing it controls the document number and fields as well now guys fields means if you are able to remember i told you that 
while transaction posting when you post a transactions right so whatever the fields are getting generated once again i'll have to log in so anyway once whatever the fields are getting whatever the fields are there at the time of transaction posting whichever fields are appearing guys those fields will be controlled by field status variant right those fields are going to be controlled by field status variant now here what i have written here like that document type is going to control the fields as well so which field guys only two fields that is document header text and reference field these two fields are going to be controlled by document type and remaining all the fields are going to be controlled by remaining fields are going to be controlled by what it is going to be controlled by uh, what is a field status variant only okay so that is why i have written here two fields only document header text and reference fields are going to be controlled by document type and remaining fields are going to be controlled by field status variant remaining in the sense i'll tell you so these are all things don't worry now again again i'll have to some issue is there guys when i have to log in like i have to log in twice then only it is going to be so anyway now let me complete this one now here okay we are having option go to oba7 okay. document type in sa document type we are having look at here required during document entry okay required during document entry so here reference number right if you apply a check mark on these two fields then what is happening while posting the transactions these fields are going to be created by system as a required entry okay now no need to apply a check guys right now we'll test it we'll test, test it practically if you apply a check mark then everybody is going to get the error okay because why because it is a client level setting now again the question is what is the setting so there will be a separate session on that don't worry okay now here so what i said now if you talk about okay so here what i said document type determines the types of transactions simple it's more payment second thing is the number range is okay which number range guys the number range which we have defined here in fbn1 right and it controls the fields as well so which fields guys you have to specify only two fields that is document text and reference field these are the two fields which is going to be controlled document type or is whatever the other fields are there guys that have to be controlled by field status variant other i mean to say in that also certain restrictions are there guys but again as i said slowly slowly i am going to increase uh, other things isn't it so document type controls only to uh header text and reference field okay now and even if you talk about the document type guys we'll be having other things also look at here reversal document type and all so we'll come to know at a time it is not possible to explain each and everything look at your account type allowed multiple things are there guys isn't here if you talk about the document type it's a matter of just read out that it controls like it determines the types of transactions isn't it and i can get further but what is your understanding understanding is zero one small topic which can be covered in one minute is going to take one hour one hour is going to make you consultant that is the difference right 
So it depends. Still, even this much, after this much explanations, also you think here, you just have a look. Multiple things are still remain, isn't it? So that's what I'm saying, guys. So many things you guys need to know, but at a time in a single session itself, it is not to cover each and everything. There is a, there are uses, but again, further certain will come at that point of time. There will be a need of a particular field. Then come back and I'll let you know. Look at here. This is what the use. This is what the control. If you guys are going to see, then you'll be having perfect understanding. That is why theoretically, it's not theoretically right now. Also, practically, I'm going, I'm explaining the thing. Then what is happening? This field is going, these fields are going to be treated as a required entry at the time of transaction posting. So very few of you will be able to visualize whatever I'm saying because this is just a basics only. But of course, most of you are not able to because you uh, are not able to visualize this transaction posting a screen. Right? But once again, when I post the transactions, I'll show you practically, then you guys will be there on the same page. Right? That is why you start from zero. So about the document type and number range guides, still I have to explain uh, other things group that I'll explain in next session. So that's all. That's all for today. Any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, like in field status variant, uh, you know, we assign that to the company code and then, you know, SAP will uh, look for, okay, what company code, what is the field status variant or fiscal year variant and then accordingly it goes. But in number ranges, we have not assigned this to the company yeah, yeah. code. So is this, am I audible, sir? What you said because I was trying to, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. audible, tell me. Yeah, so like uh, in fiscal year variant and all that uh, field status variant, we assign them to the company code. So when we give some uh, command to SAP, SAP will look for the company code, then the fiscal year variant assigned to it. Then in that, what is the period open and everything, you know, like the, the command flow is from company code to field, uh, fiscal year variant to the period open and all that, right? But in number ranges, we have not assigned the number range to the document type, but the document type is not assigned to the company code. So is this different or like uh, there is something more to it? No, Anthony dear, when you have created the number range that is created against the company, isn't it? So no need, no need to assign this number range to the company code because it is created directly against the company code only, right? document is not assigned against any company code so that's what i said it is a client level setting but again the since i have not explained this what is this client level setting that is of course this question is not going to be clarified right now here as i tell me a separate session on this because i must be having multiple examples so that you guys will be having perfect understanding okay so that is why Sir, excuse me, document type we have not assigned why because it is a client level setting but what is client sir, level setting that I can't explain right now? Sir, excuse me, I have one doubt, sir. Okay. Actually, sir, uh, as you have explained, yeah, uh, as you have explained about document type and number ranges, uh, so we need to assign this document type to the number range, sir. I mean, number range to the document type, or no need, sir. Uh -huh. Aapko so, sir can you repeat again? Doubt. I couldn't hear because. I yeah, can okay, repeat it once again? Yes, sir. What I'm asking, sir, as document type, abhi, right? Document type and number range. So, hmm. yes, sir, ye, uh, document type number range se assign karna hoga, sir, ya ne, nahi, sir? Document type number range. Can you repeat again? Oh, document number range. Ko, like, both assign karna sir. Ya zarurat nahi, sir. Of course, what he is saying, what he is saying, I'll, I'll tell you. Now, I, he said like we have created this number range, right? We have, we are having this document type. Of course, I have not created any document type. We are using the standard. Even it can be created also if required. And uh, later you guys can see. So he is saying that do we need to assign this? So of course we have to assign. 
of course a link between document type and number range this number range entire not entire number range the code we have to assign 01 i have assigned against sa document type and it's getting posted against document type so let's suppose say we have trigger the document type right from document type system is going to trigger this number range so, sir and right this now number range code for your company yeah tell me so right right now you have you have not assigned it right like in the practical session while doing it's configurations okay in the it SAP is assigned na sa document type like, 01 was there already that is what okay okay i understand 01 was already assigned the code is already assigned okay and you have given number ranges also no sir i think so yes okay i understand and against this 01 itself I have created number range one thousand to one triple nine. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, sir. I understand, sir. But uh, there is a link between oh, document type and number. Triggered. See, I'll tell you now. Have to visualize at that point. Your voice is not audible, sir. Ah, uh, dear. I think some some problem is there here. Uh, trying to pause the recording and it is saying that no recording pause. It is not possible, perfect or not. So I'll tell you guys. Session here itself. If anyone is having any further query, you guys can send me a voice. Okay, or else you guys can ask in the next session because uh, not much sure about this recording. Maybe uh, some technical glitch will be there. I have to check it because. I'm unable to pause the recording here, so I don't know whether this is recorded completely or not. Okay, so I'll quit the session. I, and whatever the other questions are there, guys, you better you can put in, and then we'll, we can proceed further. Okay. So see you guys tomorrow same time. Okay, bye. -bye. Sir, bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.